Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Patty Jo. I want to welcome you to worship today. Welcome to everyone who's watching online as well. We welcome Pastor Paul Homer with us this morning to give us our message. I have just a couple announcements. We thank you to everyone. You see all this food up here in front of us, our little food pantry during the month of November. We're going to consecrate the food offerings on Wednesday, November 22nd at 630 at the Thanksgiving Eve worship service. Now, our Sunday school has a favor to ask of you. You see some slips of paper at the end of the pews, and they ask that you write something on that paper for which you are grateful for. So think of all the things you're grateful for. Write something on that piece of paper. You can be anonymous if you choose. Then s complete that slip of paper and put it in the offering plate as the offering plate comes around to you. And then a reminder that next Sunday, the 19th, is our Commitment Sunday. Letters with pledge cards have been sent out. I got mine. I'm guessing everybody got theirs. Or you can, don or you can download a pledge card from the church's website at tlcmoline.org. We also have a video for you to members at Trinity for I think around 18 years now. Always felt very welcome to come worship here and as we became more and more familiar with the church we felt more welcome and more that this was the church we wanted to be at. It's like family. Um, we don't have much close family. My sister and brother are both passed away. Uh, we lost our son. Uh, and so it's down to our grandson and our daughter and uh, the church is, is probably a, a great part of our family. When I was young, my family moved to the Quad Cities. I, I was not quite three and we joined here at Trinity and we were members here for probably about four or five years uh, before we moved uh, out of the Quad Cities to, to uh, to Geneseo uh, and then when Sarah and I then were looking for a church before Jack was born uh, this Trinity was a, a natural place for us to look and it was one that was very comfortable because it felt to me like I was coming home. Our members realize that we all care about each other and that we love one another and that if we depend on one another and we depend on our God that we will always be seen through the tough times. I like coming to Trinity because, well, just the people, they're so welcoming and, you know, Sunday school, it's, it's fun. And After we got married, we decided that this was kind of more the direction that we wanted to go. It, um, the church aligned more with our personal beliefs um, and music was a, a priority of the church and I liked the size of the church, it wasn't too small. Um, but it wasn't too big. Like I, I get a chance to talk to everybody and know who everybody is, and and that was unique for me. Um, growing up in a large church, I like the the tighter community of of Trinity. So one of the things that that I have always experienced uh, is that I, I think that the that the congregation here it's it's very open and welcoming. Mm -hmm. To people they know, to people they don't know, and want everyone to feel at home, and and I feel that uh, that we are successful uh, with that here at Trinity in making others feel at home and comfortable here. One hundred percent agree. When I came as a new member, I felt like I was I'd always been here. I was immediately welcomed, and that made me know it was the right place for us. We did the blessings for students uh, starting school. And what touched me about it was that um, I had been one of the people that was to ask people uh, of different ages if they would participate. Everyone I asked said yes. And then when I came and watched it, um, just seeing people all the way from 
you know, preschoolers to school age to junior high to high school and then college, um, being willing to get up front and, and make a statement and then having the congregation respond to what they said and to see the congregation embracing people of all these different ages, it was just wonderful. And I went out feeling like, this is good. Um, we've got a bright future. Amen. Let's worship together. thousand generations 
falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry. Let us pray. 
O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, I should say, welcome to worship. It's a great day to worship the Lord. Good to see all of you here. And uh, we didn't have the opportunity earlier, and I don't know if the right people are here, but I think we should express our thanks for the ones who did that super video that we saw at the beginning of the service. So uh, even if they aren't here, let's applaud loud enough so they can hear us. Very good. I will introduce myself. I'm uh, Pastor Paul Homer. I reti I'm retired and last served at Emanuel Lutheran in Clinton. Uh, but um, I'm very close to, I'm really kind of home here. I grew up in Moline, and my dad was pastor at Salem. I don't want to call it a stone's throw. That doesn't sound really good. But a little way off from here. Uh, so that's the congregation in Moline that I grew up at and certainly knew about our sister congregation here at Trinity all those years. And it's, so it's good to be with you this morning. Thank you for inviting me. Our gospel reading for today comes from the 25th chapter of Matthew. Oh, oh I didn't know that was going to be on the screen. <laughs> Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look! Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridegrooms got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him in to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. And let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the words of Scripture that inspire us, for your presence among us. We thank you for the opportunities that you place before us to grow in faith, to share your love, and to serve. Be with us today that we may be inspired by your Spirit to live the, Christ, the life that Christ calls us to lead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Be prepared. Now, many of you will perhaps recognize that as the long-standing motto of the Boy Scouts. Be prepared for what? Someone once asked Robert Baden Powell, the founder of scouting. Why, for any old thing, Baden Powell, Baden -Powell replied. And a scout website expands on that idea, noting, the training you receive in your troop will help you live up to the scout motto. For example, when someone has an accident, you are prepared because of your first aid instruction. Because of life-saving practice, you might be able to save a non-swimmer who has fallen into deep water. 
But Baden-Powell wasn't thinking just of being ready for emergencies. His idea was that all scouts should prepare themselves to become productive citizens and to give happiness to other people. He wanted each scout to be ready in mind and body for any struggles and to meet the strong, with a strong heart whatever challenges might lie ahead. Be prepared for life, to live happily and without regret, knowing that you have done your best. That is what the scout motto means. Well, be prepared seems to be the point of Jesus' parable in our gospel reading. Here we have the story of 10 young ladies who have been lined up to be bridesmaids and are looking to share in a wedding celebration. They are to light the way for the bridal party so, that, so they come equipped with their lamps full of oil. But half, we are, half of them, we are told, are wise and half are foolish. Now the details of the story are quite memorable and we've just heard it so there's no reason to repeat it here. So what is it that shows that some of these bridesmaids or virgins as other translations put it, some of them are wise and then others are foolish. Greg Carey notes, the parable knows only one distinction between the wise and foolish virgins. It characterizes five as wise because they bring extra oil, and it renders five as foolish for failing to do so. Otherwise, all the virgins act the same. They arrive on time, they wait, they tire and fall asleep. Awakened, they all trim their lamps, but when the bridegroom arrives, the foolish virgins, virgins find their oil giving out. The first, the five wise virgins, claiming they only have enough oil for themselves, will not share. So the foolish five go out to buy more oil, finding the door shut upon their return. They miss out. Preparation marks the only difference. Now, the parable is quickly, typically understood as relating to the coming of Christ. He is the bridegroom that the people are waiting for. His coming is promised, but nobody knows when that will be. His people are to let their lights shine so that they are burning brightly when he comes, whenever that may be. And then they will join the wedding feast and know the thrill of his presence and the joy of his party. So the obvious question becomes, how are we to prepare? <laughs> now to think about that, I would like to take a cue from the congregation's emphasis to grow in God, care in Christ, and serve in the Spirit. And I'd like to go on and expand this parable to imagine that there were actually 20 bridesmaids, four groups of five each. Now, in this, pres this perspective, all 20 bridesmaids are invited to the wedding celebration. And of course, all have the task of letting their lights shine for the bridegroom. Now, I maintain that this expansion is really okay because this is going to be a grand celebration. I think back to times when I've done weddings and someone will ask me, well, was it a big wedding? Now, usually they're not talking about the number of guests in attendance. They're talking about the number of bridesmaids and groomsmen that the couple has. Well, if Jesus is the bridegroom, this is going to be one big wedding. The most important person ever is the groom. And so this will be the mother of all weddings, so to speak. A wedding to beat all weddings. Big! Surely 20 bridesmaids is not too many. Well, anyway, in this scenario, all 20 are sent invitations to have the honor of serving as a bridesmaid. 
But as it turns out, five of them don't open their mail. They never receive the message. Now, maybe you think this is a bit fanciful, but my wife, Chris, has a cousin who really is this way. There have been times when Chris has sent letters or even birthday cards and later learns that the cousin knows nothing about them. Oh, her cousin says, I hardly ever open my mail. Well, have we done a similar thing with God? The Lord keeps trying to communicate with us. The Lord is there sending messages, but are we getting the message? We can when we devote a portion of each day to read the Bible and talk with God in prayer. Those are key ways to open the mail from God. The Lord has good news to tell us. He's got blessings to give us. He's throwing a party and he wants us to come. And so he sends us text messages in the words of the Bible. And God speaks to us and listens to us in prayer. These are key means of communication with God and vital ways to grow in our relationship with God. So it is important to give some part of each day to our side of the conversation. In my version of the parable, five miss out because they ignore the invitation. They don't even open their mail. Talk about foolish. Well, now another group of five intended bridesmaids do open the mail and even decide to participate. But for some reason, they don't show up for the celebration. Now, in a way, this might remind us of another parable that Jesus told in which those who were invited go off and do other things instead of coming to the wedding feast. Now, again, is this too far-fetched? Mm, not really. A number of years ago, I had a wedding where one of the groomsmen didn't show up. Now, he wasn't there when the rehearsal was to start, so we waited. And people said he was driving to northern Illinois from Florida and had left a couple of days before, so we thought he was just a bit late. Well, he didn't show up, and so finally we went ahead with the rehearsal without him. And he was still not there at the time of the wedding service the next day. The groom's father was the only other man with the tux, and so he stood in that groomsman's place at the altar. <laughs> now, I never did learn what happened to this guy. But if we are to grow in God, we need to show up. And it's important to set time then for worship each week. This is important time to be with the Lord. This is where we share in Christ's banquet of Holy Communion. And there is worship here every Sunday at 9 o'clock and at 10.30. You at least know that. But every week there are some people, even members, who don't show up. Now, yes, I know that some worship experiences are better than others. Okay, I've been around a while. And some weeks the sermon or the hymns, the choir anthems, and so on, are better or not better than at other times. But Christ is always here. And you can tell in advance which times will be better than the other ones. I remember a woman who spoke to me after the service one Sunday morning. She said, Ernie and I were talking at breakfast about whether we would come to church or not today. But this service was really special and inspiring. We're glad we came. It makes you think you shouldn't skip any Sunday because you might miss out on something really good. I think she got the point. But there's more to it than that. There's another aspect to worship because not only is Christ here, but so are the people of God. 
so are the caring, supportive, loving, encouraging people of the church. Many people find care and support on Sunday morning that they find nowhere else. Even just a hug or a few words of concern while sharing the peace or when walking out after the service can mean a lot and show that you care. I heard of one woman who actually sat during the whole service making notes in her bulletin. During the service, she would look around at the people who were there, and then she would think about and remember those people's needs and hurts, and she would make notes about it. Those notes became her prayer list for each day following. And then she would also follow up with a phone call or a note during the week to those folks. At worship, we can not only grow in Christ, grow in God, we can care in Christ. And then we can take that caring out into the world. By sharing worship every week, we will be blessed and guided and nurtured. We will know special times of joy with the, Lord, with the Lord, and we can experience the love and care of Christ so that we can take that out to share it with others. But those who don't show up just miss out. How foolish. Of course, this brings us to the 10 in Jesus' parable. Another group of five bridesmaids have the resources they need, but they don't reserve a specific portion for the purposes of the bridegroom. On the one hand, maybe they didn't plan ahead and so they ran out of oil. Or maybe they used what they had for themselves, burning oil to give themselves light and then had nothing left for the groom. Or maybe it was neglect. Maybe they fell asleep before putting their lamps out, which would have conserved their oil. But whatever it was, they used up their resources in the wrong places and did not fulfill the task of letting their lights shine for the bridegroom. The point is, it's important to determine a portion of our personal and spiritual gifts to be used in the service of Christ through the church and in the community. God has given each person ability and energies to use in his work. But sometimes people devote all that they have in time and skill to other purposes. And so there's nothing left for God's mission. Sometimes people neglect their God-given gifts or think they don't have any and believe that they have nothing to offer. Still, it is true that God provides in advance and in abundance whatever is needed to do the task he calls his people to. God never gives his people a task without providing the resources to do it. And that includes our financial resources. Well, five bridesmaids seem to just go with the flow but found themselves unprepared to deal with what actually happened. They were there, the bridegroom was at hand, but they had nothing left to do the job. So they missed the party. People who don't use their resources for their God-given purposes miss out on the joys of the Lord's service. So close, so foolish. But of course, there are the five who reserved a portion of their oil for the bridegroom's coming. And they were able to serve in the spirit of celebration. They are prepared and ready to fulfill their task and let their lights shine. They set aside oil from the start and did not count on things just working out. And so they are able to experience all the joy and wonder of the wedding feast. They had planned, they were prepared, and now they could party. There are many ways to serve in the Spirit, but a key one is in the light of Jesus' parable, 
is what I would call percentage living. That is, we know that Christ comes to us, but we are committing a specific part of every area of life to grow, care, serve, and share. So when Christ comes to us, how are we to be prepared? By intentionally dedicating a portion of our time and our lives to daily prayer and Bible, weekly worship, sharing Christ's love here and everywhere, using our abilities and gifts regularly in his service, and sharing generously of our income. When we think in percentage terms, we can see the joy coming and growing. Those who grow in God, care in Christ, and serve in the Spirit will let their lights shine, aware that overflowing generosity and abundant joy go hand in hand. So, wise or foolish, planning and preparation make the difference. Those who intentionally maintain communication with God through prayer, who show up for worship, who offer to others Christ's loving care, who use their gifts in the Lord's purposes, and who share what they have for the mission of Christ, will find real and abundant joy. So be prepared. Be prepared to be with Christ to do the work of the kingdom, letting your lights shine, and to join the party. You'll be glad you did. Amen. As we continue with a worship song, um, you're invited to join in the party of uh, giving of your offering. So if someone could help out with that, it would be wonderful. From the earth to the sky, let it rise, let it rise. The dark come to light now alive, now alive. We are here to lift you up, here to sing a song of love, here to give you God what you are worthy of. A holy road reaching for heaven, our praise poured out with a rest. Abandoned our worship, God is holy. Yours. Here we stand, here we wait. Have your way, have your way. Every hand in this place, God, we raise, God, we raise. We are here to lift you up. Here to sing. worthy of a holy Lord reaching for heaven our praise poured out with a reckless abandon our worship God is holy yours we are holy yours forever Abandoned our worship. 
Let us join together in our confession before God. Holy and merciful God, we ask for your help, your power, and your spirit, so that we can amend our lives and grow more each day into the image of Christ. We confess that we fear what is different. We confess that it's easier to lock the doors of our community than to receive those who don't look like you. Love by love, 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 vote by we vote. vote. We confess that we have not lived out our call to share an abundant life and unconditional love. We believe that you have the power to turn us around to our inclusive way of living. So we ask you to do that. We ask you to give us the courage to change. We ask that you give us the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love to be your people in all we say and do. Amen. And as we have confessed our sins, we do so in the realization that our Lord does reach out to us in grace and mercy. He forgives us all our sins, no matter what they may be, that we may be joined to him in Christ forever. You are forgiven. You are given new life. You are Christ's. Amen. As we gather today, we gather to celebrate that great wedding feast, that great banquet that our Lord has prepared for us. He has given us himself in his, in his life and death on the cross and in his resurrection to eternal life. And he gives us in a special way his own self in his body and blood in communion. And so today we remember how Christ has given us this very special gift. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, invite you invite us into your kingdom, so teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. On the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Joined to Christ, we have the peace of the Lord. Let us share that peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another with a greeting of peace.
My worship sheet lists next closing remarks. And that's always a dangerous thing to tell a pastor. <laughs> if I may, I will indulge you with, uh, or if you'll indulge me, I'll tell you a story about that. When my uh, sister got married, uh, my brother and I officiated at the service, and of course our dad came in with the bride and, and so on. and. My brother, it was at my brother's church, and so uh, he was the lead pastor in the service and ran the rehearsal. And when it came to giving the bride at the beginning of the rehearsal, he said to our father, uh, now your answer is our mother, her mother and I do. You know, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. And my brother had this habit of adding in, 
uh, and this is your last chance to add something if you want. And I thought, mm, don't say that to another pastor. <laughs> and sure enough, when in the day of the wedding, they came in and he said, who gives this woman to be married to this man? And my dad said, her mother and I do. And we really mean that. And he, <laughs> he went on to talk for about three minutes. You know, <laughs> so... It's dangerous to say closing remarks. <laughs> well, here's a pencil if you want to scratch that out. Scratch that out, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but of course, the theme of uh, the stewardship effort is to grow in God, to care in Christ, and to serve in the Spirit. And that's a great summary of what our life in Christ is about. As I said earlier, I believe God never calls his people to a task without already providing the resources to do that. And that's especially the case in the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church. Because we grow in Christ, because we grow in God, care in Christ, and serve in the Spirit, we know joy and love at the fellowship of the church and the banquet of our Lord. Sharing generously provides joy in return. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing one last song. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your Let's say it together. Grow in God. Care in Christ. Serve in the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Go in peace.